Hi everybody, it is still December 16, 2018. I want to thank my subscriber for sending along this article, but I have to tell you, just even reading the headline, I thought to myself, get me off this planet. Get me off this planet. Wow. You know, it's hard enough to deal with everything that is happening to adults, but when you look at what is happening to children, Oof, boy, that's when I get really upset. Schools ordered to teach eight-year-olds that boys can have periods, too. London, Brighton, Hove. Uh, teachers are ordered to teach children as young as eight that people of all genders can have periods, as well as to install sanitary waste dis disposal units in every toilet room. Uh the guidelines published by the local council earlier this month, this was posted today by the way, um, on taking a period positive approach in Brighton and Hove schools. Is it Hove? I don't know. I could have mispronounced it. Okay, so it asserts there is more work to do across all settings to prevent and reduce stigma related to periods and talking about periods. And I will link below to this actual document, Neighborhoods, Inclusion Communities, and Equalities Committee Agenda, Item 34, the Brighton and Hove City Council, Countering Period Poverty. Really? Okay. Well, key messages. Teachers are told to stress to pupils that trans boys and men and non-non-binary people. What's non-binary? I'm sure I looked it up once. Um, they can have periods as well. And periods, they need to uh, stress that they are something to celebrate that we can see this in ceremonies and celebrations across the world yeah you know in eight days I'm gonna be 60 years old I've been here for 60 years six decades and I have yet to come across period ceremonies and celebrations. Oh, I'm sure they're out there. But somehow, I've been spared that. Language and learning about periods must be inclusive of all genders, cultures, faiths, sexual orientations, and bins for used period products are provided in all toilets from key stage two, pupils aged between seven and 11. The document demands schools also take a, <laughs> listen to this, a cross-cultural approach to learning about periods, particularly in science, and I don't know what uh, PSAG is. I thought it was phys ed, but here's PE, so I think that's phys ed. Okay, but also in media studies, graphics, and textiles. We're actually living this. This is real, okay? This, this is our life now. Uh, the council in the guidelines state, by encouraging effective education on menstruation and puberty, we hope to reduce stigma and ensure no child or young person feels shame in asking for period products inside, inside or outside of school if they need them. My God, thank God this council finally is implementing this program because how did we girls ever get through school How did we actually survive without all of these agendas being implemented? We believe that it's important for all genders to be able to learn and talk about menstruation together. Our approach recognizes the fact that some people who have periods are trans or non-binary. Schools may need to alert social services if parents are dismissive towards a gender-questioning child demanding a sex change. 
Oh wait, that's something else. Yes, this was previously reported on guidelines from the same council. Um, do you see, parents, can you see that they are usurping your authority to bring your children up in a way that you want to? That schools, not just in the United States, but pretty much all over the world, but certainly Western countries, these schools have become sick, twisted indoctrination centers. They are screwing your children up. But you're going to alert social services if parents are dismissive towards a gender-questioning child demanding a sex change. Okay. Um, if you can't see that something's very wrong with that, I don't know what to tell you. Schools were also told to dismiss objections to trans pupils sharing the girls' changing rooms and safety concerns around male pupils competing in sex, single-sex sports with females, insisting it is the responsibility of members of staff to support trans pupils and students and cisgender pupils. What the hell is cisgender? I know I looked that one up. Can't remember. You know, I was thinking today about nuance. I was thinking about nuance. Nuance is gone. People don't even understand nuance. You know, now we're living in a world that it, that unbelievably has become more uh, filled with people that do that dichotomous thinking. Love, hate, uh, good, bad. Um, like, there's no in-between. There's just nuance, okay? But where do we find nuance? In gender. In biological gender, we find nuance. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. There are two, two biological uh, sexes, male and female. That's it. That's it. That's it. So all of this non-binary, cisgender, uh, and the, I don't know, uh, how long is the list of pronouns? 63 different pronouns. Our world has just become friggin' unbelievably twisted. It's so sickening. Transgender Promoting Council, same council, that Brighton Hove Council, uh, asked children aged four to choose gender identity. This is an article posted in 2016, but here it is. Ex uh, parents expressed alarm as suspicion gathers that the city's educational establishment has been taken over by a hardcore transgender lobby. Oh, uh, it's absolutely an agenda. This transgender thing um, and this is not about me judging individuals who are transgender. It's the agenda. When this is forced upon four-year-olds, something's very wrong here. When they don't even have the mental capacity, the cognitive capacity to even understand any of this, Brighton and Hove City Council launched a trans inclusion schools toolkit encouraging schools and parents to support transgender and gender questioning children, which may include taking hormones or and or having gender reassignment surgeries. And yeah, your Green Party uh, supports this. It's uh, a local member of parliament from the Green Party announced that they are now calling women non-men. Okay. Non-men to avoid offending the transgendered. Anybody calls me a non-man, I am going to be offended. So, 
Isn't this interesting? So that we don't offend a very small percentage of the population, we're going to offend a huge portion of the population. Non-men now. Uh, huh. I wish I wish I weren't so tired and beaten down because I think I could think of something funny to say here. But when it involves children, it's hard. Um, because you know that children are getting really screwed up by all of this. The city council wrote to thousands of parents to ask if their child had another gender identity other than male or female, adding, please support your child to choose the gender they most identify with. Office of the Children's Commissioner sent a survey for pupils aged 13 to 18 at every school in Brighton asking them to choose a gender with which they identify. Emma Daniel, Daniel, um, a counselor and head of Brighton's Equalities Committee, defended the local government's transgender agenda. We have inserted the additional text, text about gender identity in response to calls from families, young people, and schools to show an inclusive approach. Bull! I call bull. Bullshit! I think she's lying. I don't think she got any calls. Um, this is called uh, degradation. How to degrade the people of Western society. It's uh, in the communist goals. And it's also coming from the United Nations. This is our new world order. This is when we're all uh, just global citizens singing Kumbaya together. Loving it. When women will be called non-man. And I guess men will be called non-woman. God, get me off this planet, please. Oh, God, do I understand people who say they're done. I feel pretty done. Treating children, th this comes from a mother who was rather shocked. Uh, she said that she was worried that confusing her child with transgender propaganda could have harmful ramifications later in life. Treating children as though they are adults is a dangerous approach from a safeguarding point of view. They are not adults. Let them enjoy the innocence and creativity of their childhood. Oh, but no, no. We've got too many agendas that we have to force upon children. It makes me sick to my stomach. All right, so I was thinking, hmm, we do have an awful lot of children who claim to uh, be, well, a girl feels she's a boy, a boy feels that she's a girl, and we're seeing that more and more. Oh, and then we see the whole family becomes uh, the opposite sex of, you know, the individual members. Um, they're paraded on mainstream media. It, it, I don't understand how people can't see this as a deliberate agenda. This is not just a organic uh, change, uh, cultural change in our society. When you have changes occurring, social, cultural changes occurring with a rapidity that is head spinning, you know that it is being brought on, deliberately forced upon the societies. Okay, um, but I was thinking about all of what children are now exposed to that we were not as baby boomers. Baby boomers, the the, the increase in uh, pesticides, herbicides, chemicals, the, the use of chemicals, the EPA allowing higher and higher and higher levels of well, in particular because it's uh, on point to this transgender thing. 
um, endocrine disrupting chemicals? Why would the EPA allow greater amounts? Why has the United States not banned an awful lot of the pesticides and uh, these chemicals in our foods, in our in, in every product? Why have we manifested a toxic country? Other countries have banned many of these chemicals, pesticides that we use because they are highly toxic, but I guess it's American exceptionalism that we're just going to really saturate our crops, our foods, and children's toys, and plastics, and cosmetics, and everything, because we're just so incredibly exceptional, I guess. It's really remarkable how there are Americans who really do believe they're exceptional because they happen to have been born in this country, and the exception, <laughs> the exceptionalism is really profound stupidity and, uh, I guess, um, a drive to die early. BPA. These are the 12 hormone-altering chemicals. So, higher and higher levels. These children are eating foods, they're playing in environments that and drinking water and well breathing air that's uh, some of the chemicals are hormone disrupting chemicals that they're spraying when you think of the overload of these hormone altering chemicals in children that has to account for they feeling a girl feeling like a boy, a boy feeling like a girl. BPA, chemical used in plastics, imitating the sex hormone estrogen. Synthetic hormone. It can trick the body into thinking it's the real thing. And the results aren't pretty. BPA has been linked to everything from breast and other cancers to reproductive problems, obesity, early puberty, heart disease. And according to the United States government, government tests, 93% of Americans have BPA. Food in cans, BPA lining, all plastic products, anything that you are buying that's wrapped in plastic or in a plastic container, leaching BPA into the food. Dioxin. Dioxins can disrupt the delicate ways that both male and female sex hormone signaling occurs in the body. Pretty difficult to avoid since our food is widely, the food supply is widely contaminated with dioxin. It's in products like meat, fish, milk, eggs, butter, atrazine. Feminization of male frogs. Researchers found that exposure to even low levels of the herbicide atrazine, atrazine is also one of those, hey, EPA, let me just study it for a couple of decades to find out if it's, uh, if it's one of those chemicals that, you know, we should take off the market. We'll study it for decades. While other countries have taken it off the market, other countries didn't even start with it because it's so highly toxic. Uh, atrazine widely used on the majority of corn crops in the United States. Uh, it also is a pervasive drinking water contaminant and it's linked to breast tumors, delayed puberty, prostate inflammation in animals, uh, linked to uh, prostate cancer in people, um, phthalates, death-inducing signaling in testicle cells, they kill your testicle cells, guys, making them die earlier than they should uh, in your man parts, death. And 
and phthalates have been linked to hormone changes, lower sperm count, less mobile sperm, birth defects in the male reproductive system, obesity, diabetes, thyroid irregularities. It's found in plastic food containers, children's toys, uh, plastic wrap made from PVC, uh, which has the labeling, recycling label number three, percolates, food tainted with rocket fuel. Great. Okay. Well, uh, it seems to have contaminated much of our produce and milk. Uh, it competes with the nutrient iodine, which the thyroid gland needs to make thyroid hormones, altering your thyroid hormone balance. If these hormones that regulate, or it's these hormones that regulate metabolism in adults and are critical for proper brain and organ development in infants and young children. Uh, you can reduce percolate in your drinking water by installing a reverse osmosis filter. And for those of you who make up now the majority of Americans who have very little money, enjoy your percolate. Um, as for food, it's pretty much impossible to avoid since it is pretty much in everything. Wow. Fire retardants. Um, yeah. Polybrominated um, diphenyl ethers, PBDEs, uh, contaminate the bodies of people and wildlife around the globe, even polar bears. They imitate thyroid hormones in our bodies and disrupt their activity. They can lead to lower IQ, among other uh, very serious health effects. Um, and guess where it is? Well, it's in an awful lot, but as they say, it's virtually impossible to avoid. But it seems to have been put into women's breast milk. Or no, I'm sorry. A Swedish study found it in women's breast milk. Well, so you're breastfeeding your child with fire retardants. Lead, well, we all know lead's a problem, um, but many people probably didn't know that it disrupts your hormones. And lead has been found to lower sex hormone levels disrupting the hormone signaling that regulates the body's major stress system. Um, arsenic, arsenic, toxic, we all know that. You eat a lot of it, ingest a lot of it, boom, you're dead very quickly. But how about just smaller amounts of that arsenic? Well, that can cause skin, bladder, and lung cancer, but less well known, it messes with your hormones. Specifically, it can interfere with normal hormone functioning in the glucocorticoid system that regulates how our bodies process sugar and carbohydrates, which is linked to weight gain or loss, protein wasting, immunosuppression, insulin resistance, which leads to diabetes, osteoporosis, growth, retardation, and high blood pressure. Mercury, we know, um, perfluorinated Chemicals, PFCs, on that nonstick cookware. Well, get rid of your nonstick cookware really bad because as you're cooking, that is leaching into your food. PFCs leaching into your food. Uh, and it's completely resistant to biodegradation. Um, what that means is, even though it was banned, it'll be showing up in people for decades, I mean for generations to come. Uh, it's linked to decreased sperm quality, low birth weight, kidney disease, thyroid disease, high cholesterol, and it can affect your thyroid and sex hormone levels. Um, organ, uh, organophosphate pesticides, neurotoxic, these compounds, Nazis produced it in huge quantities for chemical warfare, 
but after the war ended, American scientists used the same chemistry to develop a long line of pesticides that target the nervous system of insects, despite many studies linking organophosphate exposure to effects on brain development, behavior, and fertility, they are still among the more common pesticides in use today, interfering with the way testosterone communicates with cells, lowering testosterone, and altering thyroid hormone levels, glycoethers, shrunken testicles, common in solvents, uh, in paints, cleaning products, brake fluid, cosmetics. European Union says that some of these chemicals may damage fertility or the unborn child. Okay, well, those are just 12 of our endocrine disrupting chemicals. We're fucking up children really badly. The EU list of potential endocrine disruptors. You've got 43 potential endocrine disrupting chemicals that you are using. Um, but they have claimed that, well, I don't know the date of this, so they claim that many of these chemicals, they're still being studied. But many of the chemicals that we're using here, the pesticides, you have banned. So of course, what is on this list? Many of the chemicals that we use, but that we use, but atrazine. I don't think atrazine is in use in Europe, but it may be. Um, I can't remember. I will link below to it all. I will also uh, link below to this article, Don't Trust the Feds on GMOs, Pesticides, Chemicals. This is a wonderful, uh, fact-filled article that has an awful lot of references. And it focuses on a lot of different, oh yeah, banned in the EU, atrazine. Okay. But safe in the United States. Yeah, very safe. Well, it goes into more. Uh, endocrine disrupting products and yeah government there's no basis for trust uh, goes into the government corruption and revolving door between industry and government uh, industry and profit driven science oversimplified and outdated scientific procedures fake science ignoring the precautionary principle everything we do here in the United States is dangerous to the American people. We gotta wake up. We gotta do something. You know, many of us are gonna be dying out soon. What about these kids? Oh my God, the world that these kids are being left? There are no words. There are no words to describe what we are doing to them.